ready, I have your attention, please. The podcast, World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment, is now on the air. May I have your attention, please? The podcast, World Awakenings, is now on the air. This is World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with your host, Carl Gruber. World Awakenings is a podcast dedicated to opening your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to all things metaphysical and spiritual, and just how they play an all-important role in our daily life. So join Carl on this enlightening experience as he interviews metaphysical and spiritual experts to discuss, debate, and delve deeply into the hows and whys of this worldwide awakening. Shall we begin? The stress and drama of daily life can many times be hard to deal with on your own. And that's why Excelling My Life gives you the freedom to choose a professional life coach without having to make any special commitments and giving you control of how long you want to spend with your life coach. Go right now to www.excellingmylife.com and find a coach that suits you best. Then click on call or chat now. You'll be automatically connected to your own life coach privately and instantly via chat or call. Find your very own life coach now. No waiting. That's www.excellingmylife.com. It's the quick, easy, and affordable way to connect now to your own life coach. Let excellingmylife.com help ease the stress and strain of daily life. Hey, hey, welcome to yet another episode of World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment. I'm your host, Carl Gruber, and after three years of producing and hosting this podcast, it's always special for me to have some of my guests return to the show, and that is the case today. Now, before I introduce them, please take a moment to click that subscribe button below so that you never miss a single episode of this show. And as I mentioned, I am always grateful to have some of my previous guests return for another appearance. And this is one of those occasions. And believe me, I'm absolutely over the moon excited to have not only Gary Renard back on World Awakenings, but also Cindy Laura Renard. They both have appeared on the show by themselves. So this is the first time we are honored to have them on the show together. And both of their individual appearances on this show are by far and away the most popular of all my episodes. Episodes. So to tell you a little bit, Gary Renard is a Hay House published uh, uh, best-selling author, including his seminal bestseller, The Disappearance of the Universe, in which two of his uh, ascended masters, Art, Art, uh, Persa and Arten, appear live in concert in the flesh and uh, help Gary to learn about A Course in Miracles and his own spiritual awakening. And he also has three more bestsellers, Love Has Forgotten No One, Your Immortal Reality, and Lifetimes When Jesus and Buddha Knew Each Other. Cindy Laura Renard is also a best-selling author of the books A Course in Well-Being and The Business of Forgiveness. She is also a talented singer and musician featured on the five CDs she has released. And I, I just personally got to recommend all these books. They are just top-notch stuff. So get out, get out to your bookstore or go on the Amazon. Now, together, Gary and Cindy are two of the most renowned teachers of the modern spiritual guide, A Course in Miracles. And they not only travel the world to teach workshops on the ACIM, but they hold many beautiful online workshops that allows easy access to their teaching. So we are so blessed to have you two on World Awakenings together. Yay. <laughs> Welcome. Yay. Thank hey. you, Carl. Yeah. Thank you for having us together you know, again. Yeah, it's great to see you again. I, I just want to comment because there might be viewers that don't understand why I'm wearing sunglasses. I think that'd be a good thing to do. <laughs> well, you, live in, you live in Hollywood. Come on. We do live in Hollywood, though. I have to say yeah, we do live in Hollywood. I'm not trying to be cool, but here we go. Yeah, no, I, uh, for anybody watching who doesn't know, I strained my eyes a little while ago 
Yeah. I think it's just too much. It was too much reading on the screen. Um, I have sensitive eyes and I just overdid it. So they just feel a little weak right now. So my solution is right now to wear glare free sunglasses so I can still do my work. I can still do online stuff. I just got to be careful right now. So I'm just uh, resting my eyes. So yeah. that, that's the story. Well, we think you are cool anyway, and it's kind of fun because I can see the reflection of your computer screen in there. It looks like your pupils almost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, so we we have to uh, jump into this. Um, uh, I Like I told you guys, I do have a little loose uh, outline here, but I do want to ask now that the world is reopening a, a good amount after being shut down because of this extended pandemic, you guys seem to be back out full in forced traveling and teaching, especially you, Gary. Gary, what's going on with that for you? Well, we're not back to uh, full strength yet, but uh, it is interesting and exciting because we've done you know so many things online this year, and I think that uh, things are never going to be quite the same, you know, because people have gotten so used to doing things online. Like we went to uh, the shopping mall yesterday and it was practically empty. And mm -hmm. there's usually like a lot of kids there and, and even they're getting used to shopping online and it's like changing everything. So uh, when we do go out and when I go out and uh, do live workshops, people are very excited about it because it's just not happening that much uh, anymore. So uh, I like it because I like that uh, personal feedback from people, especially like when I'm doing the book signing at the end, uh, I take the time to talk to people. You know, a lot of authors, it's like they're rubber stamping the books and moving people on and stuff. And no, I actually take the time uh, to talk to people mm -hmm. and answer their questions. And I really like that kind of uh, personal interaction. I mean, it's great to do things online, but uh, there's nothing quite the same as an in-person uh, experience. And I do know that you especially do like to uh, go out and do live workshops. I've had the good fortune to be uh, at a couple of your individual ones you did years ago in Cincinnati. In this past um, March, I was uh, also fortunate to join the both of you in San Antonio, Texas, which was your first um, live uh, teaching in over a year. And, and it was so much fun and it was so informative. We we're glad to have you there. That was a really fun event. We are going to go back next year as well, back to San Antonio, the same venue, same place next April, the end of nice. April. Yeah, it, it was great. Um, but, um, you know, I do have to ask you, uh, Gary, and I'm, I may have asked you this in a previous chat, but I, I think my viewers and listeners would like to know, you know, it's been a long time now for you when your Ascended Masters uh, te uh, teachers, uh, Art and Person, first appeared to you over 25 years ago. I'm sure you had no idea what a ride you were in for, and, and it's still going. I mean, is is have things changed for you in that respect? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, December will make uh, 29 years. Uh, since they first appeared to me. And uh, my life has changed completely. And I've changed uh, completely. I, I had never heard of A Course in Miracles when they first appeared to me. And uh, I can't actually relate to the person that I was when they first appeared to me. It's been a complete transformation. And uh, I have come to discover my innocence and uh, the fact that I'm a divine creation of God. And uh, back then, I, I don't even think I thought I was a very good person, you know, much less a divine creation of God. So uh, my whole identity has shifted from the idea of being a body and being separate and uh, thinking that this was me to the idea that, that actually this has nothing to do with what I really am. This is just, you know, a throwaway thing. You know, you use it for a while and you throw it away and it's not that meaningful except for the meaning that you give it and what you use it for. And uh, fortunately, I've come to be able to use it as a communication tool for the Holy Spirit, which is uh, the way that, of course, Miracle says that it can be. But of course, I have no idea about all of that. My idea of Arden and Carissa and what they are has completely changed because when they first appeared to me, I thought they were people. I thought they were real people. 
And as the years went on, they explained to me that they were actually the Holy Spirit appearing as art in person, that they were appearing as symbols that would help to awaken everyone. So uh, they were symbols of the Holy Spirit. And uh, when they told me things like who they were, you know, 2000 years ago, uh, like when they were with Jesus, you know, they explained to me that since then they have become enlightened, which means that they are out of here. They ain't coming back. And by the way, Jesus isn't coming back either. I hate to disappoint you Christians, but uh, he's not going to be coming back. And uh, they're home with God, but their image uh, can't yet be called upon. You know, Arvin person had me use a quotation at the beginning of the book, The Disappearance of the Universe, and I had no idea what it meant at the time that they were telling me to use it. But it says there are those who have reached God directly you know, retaining no trace of worldly limits and remembering their own identity perfectly. Uh, these might be called the teachers of teachers because although they are no longer visible, their image can yet be called upon and they will appear when and where it is helpful for them to do so. So what's happening is even though Arden and Persa are, are enlightened, they're awakened, they've gone home uh, to God, the Holy Spirit can still use their image to teach and to communicate uh, the word of God to other people. So that's what they really are. And the Holy Spirit is using them for that purpose. And these are things that I've learned over the years. Uh, it didn't come to me all at once. This is a process. If you're interested in doing uh, the teachings that are in my books and the Course in Miracles, then you might as well realize that it's a long-term thing. You know, it's a lifetime spiritual path. And uh, that seems like a long time when it's actually nothing. It's like a drop in the bucket compared to the billions of dream years that we think that we have existed in. And the truth is one lifetime is nothing. And if you can actually uh, become enlightened, awaken in one or two lifetimes, that in itself is a miracle. Hmm. No order of difficulty in miracles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. And, and you, Cindy, um, you've been a student of the ACIM for a long time, too. How about you? Uh, what was your personal transformation over the years of, of studying to where you're at now? Well, I, I started back in 2005. So it has been about 16 years now um, since I've been practicing it. And I have to say, I one thing I've really noticed <clears throat> very prominently in my life is I just don't get upset like I used to at things. I, I'm, it's not the same. I'm much more peaceful. And things that used to really push my buttons don't push my buttons anymore. Um, it's not that I never get triggered. I can certainly get triggered, which can manifest for me that manifests as anxiety sometimes. And not so much I'm upset at people. For me, it just manifests more like stress, stress, anxiety. And then I know that I got triggered, but it's, I know how to look at that now. So I can look at that in a way, whereas before it would have added to the anxiety. I can look at it in a way now that evens it out, makes it more neutral. And I, so that I can remain above the battleground. And that's the difference. I can look at it with the Holy Spirit um, instead of what I used to do, which was on my own. Uh, without any any extra assistance or help. I assumed that I could do it on my own. So the course has helped me to see that we can't do this on our own. We need a teacher like the Holy Spirit um, who represents wisdom beyond time and space, that knows the truth about us, that understands what we are and what we're doing, what why we're appearing here, that we're all on the same path, home to God. Um, so when in my personal journey, when I realize these things and I exchange any attack thoughts I might have for the will of God instead, what does God will for me? As the Course says, he wills that we be one with each other in him and also that we be joyous, that we be peaceful. That's how he created us and, and this perfect innocence. And so when I get in touch with that, which the Course has helped me do, it can override 
a lot of, of negative emotions and really helped me to step up and remain above the battleground and remain in a positive frame of mind as well. So it's been invaluable teaching. And it, it, I've noticed a tremendous difference and change in my peace of mind. I, I love that term above the battleground. And, and I will say personally too, Gary, I'm like you, I've been a, a student of the ACIM for about 17 years. And like you, when I look back at who I, I used to be, it's just, what? <laughs> that way? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and the same thing too, I have found it's a beautiful metamorphosis. Um, all three of us or anybody who, who study uh, A Course in Miracles, there's more peace. Um, judgment is this, I have no interest anymore in, in judgment. I mean, it, 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 sure, some judgments pop up, but I just kind of like, thank you, but I'm not interested. And, and, and so more peace and more appreciation and gratitude. And who doesn't want that? You know, so, well, you know, I'm glad to use the word uh, metamorphosis because that's actually what's happening. Uh, we are uh, changing identities to a higher life form, except this life form doesn't have any form because it's limitless and shapeless and uh, completely abstract and so wonderful you can't even describe it. I mean, it just blows away anything that this world has to offer. But a uh, caterpillar doesn't become a butterfly overnight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has to undergo a complete transformation, a complete metamorphosis until it's ready to go to that higher place, to go to that higher life form. And that's what we're doing when we do uh, something like A Course in Miracles. We're undoing the ego. We're undoing our false identity, as the Course puts it. Uh, salvation is undoing. And you're undoing the fault you. And as you go along, your experience may start to change. You know, maybe your body will start to feel lighter. You know, maybe it'll start to feel more like the figure in the dream that it really is, instead of this uh, thing that you actually have to carry around. And you start to become more and more aware of dreaming. In fact, the Course says that awareness of dreaming is a function of the miracle worker. And if it's a dream, it's not real. You know, what we're seeing is not true. And that's why it's forgivable. If it was true, uh, forgiveness would not really be justified. But forgiveness is justified because what we're seeing is not true. We made it up. You know, what we're seeing is a projection that is coming from uh, our own unconscious mind. And it looks like it's outside of us, but that's a trick. You know, it's a trick of the ego. And uh, the truth is there's nothing outside of us that it's never really left its source, which is in the mind. Uh, just like in a movie theater, the source is the projector. And what's on the screen is just uh, an effect, you know, an effect of the projector. And you're not going to change the effect by fooling around with the effect. Uh, the only way to have substantial change is to change what's in the projector. And that's why A Course in Miracles says this is a course in cause and not effect. You know, now we're dealing with the cause, which is mind, which is why this is a course in mind training. And the mind has to be trained because uh, the mind is like an animal. You know, if you don't train it, it'll run wild. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is look on your TV screen to see all these people whose minds out there are running wild. And uh, at one point, Art and Purser referred to this dream of a world as psycho planet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it really is. If you look out there and you don't uh, realize at first, well, this is my projection, which means that uh, what I'm seeing is a uh, picture of the conflict that is in the unconscious mind of mine that I can't see. You know, so uh, the source of what you're seeing is within you, but you can't see it because it's hidden. The ego is very clever and it's hidden the cause of what you're seeing away from you, but it's actually you. And uh, all these people out there are just projections that are symbolic of the guilt that is there in your own unconscious mind that you didn't even know about, but which you are learning about and which you can be free of with the Holy Spirit's help if you learn to forgive these images that you are seeing. Carl, you mentioned uh, judgment too. Uh, that's really important uh, because the Course says judgment is the cause of all loss of peace judgment is the cause of all loss of peace. 
That means anytime we are not at peace, that we do not feel fear, feel fear, <laughs> excuse me, anytime that we do not feel peaceful, there's a judgment behind that. There's a judgment that it helps us to know that because then we can look within and ask ourselves, well, what have I been thinking lately, right? What Even right in this moment that I'm not peaceful, what thoughts have, are going through my mind right in this moment or what I have I been thinking, you know, starting from this morning up until now or lately, it helps us to know that that there must be a judgment there. I'm judging either myself or someone else or a situation that I find myself in. And it's the, the judgment comes from the ego. If it's the ego's judgment, it's going to be upsetting to us. It's going to be fearful, anxiety provoking. It's going to feel like we're, we're not certain about anything that we're going to be worried or those are the kind of judgments Jesus is talking about in the course attack. He calls them attack thoughts. There, there are attack thoughts in our minds that uh, when we start to learn that we can replace those attack thoughts with the thought system of love, which is the Holy Spirit's thought system that knows no attack, that sees us as we really are, that reminds us of the truth of our innocence. Um, if we start to think that way and replace our attack thoughts with that thought system of the course, um, that's how we start to chip away the layers of unconscious guilt and undo the ego that along with true forgiveness. So it's just can be a helpful thing to remember to, for all of us, all of us to just look at what we've been thinking. If we do find ourselves not at peace, where's the judgment? You know, it's interesting. You're talking about judgment. Um, I had an interesting little, um, um synchronicity thing. I, I go to my local gym, once or twice a week to work out. And I've been going there for um, a year, over a year. And, and uh, so the other day I went and I, I was in a little funky mood and I might've had a couple judgments floating around. I look up on the wall and I've seen it in giant 10 foot letters. It said in the, in the, in the free weight area, it said judgment free zone. <laughs> Well, oh my gosh! It was almost like wow. like the Holy Spirit went, "Hey, do, dummy, look up there!" You know, and it's oh, yeah. That's interesting. That's I think, great. That's I great. Just, by the way, Carl, uh, that is great. Uh, not to change the subject, I just wanted to mention there's an optical illusion going on here right now. Also, just like Einstein described this world as an optical delusion of consciousness, uh, it looks like Cindy and I are in two different rooms here because there's a line going right through yep. the middle of this picture here but if you if you look at uh my hand here you yes. can see that we are actually uh in the, <laughs> in the same room here so yeah, it does it's the way our background uh um, yeah is set up i think it just makes it look like yeah it's yes, that's just, an optical illusion right there yeah, it's just an illusion of separation here so but this is how the, the magicians is, yeah. must do it right so they could take something <laughs> as simple as a backdrop that makes people look separate you should be like me, just hang out in the cosmos here. That's it. <laughs> um, you know, I've been hanging out in the cosmos, yeah. but that's more more about that later. Well, whenever you, you know, you, Gary and Cindy, when you, 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 you're explaining this so eloquently and beautifully, and I, I, my mind always drifts to somebody who for the very first time is watching this or listening to this, and, and all I can picture is their jaw hitting the ground go, what? <laughs> What? Well, pick up disappearance of the universe and, and business of forgiveness and the ACIM, and you'll find out. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, mention: we were talking about our metamorphosis, Gary, and I think you have ex you experienced this early in in your uh, transformation. As the dream of the illusion falls away, it's possible for a, a new student to start seeing flashes of light and in other things that like the dream is falling away. Is that true? Yeah, uh, that can happen. In fact, uh, if you look at uh, workbook lesson number 15 in A Course in Miracles, my thoughts are images that I've made. Uh, it actually talks about that. It says, as you go along, you may experience uh, light episodes. The course refers to them 
as. And uh, I was shocked when I first read that because I'd been experiencing that mm. in the year or so before Art and Persa appeared to me at the end of 1992. I'd been experiencing that throughout the year and I didn't know what they were, but I thought they were fun. I thought they were interesting, fascinating. And uh, they may take many different forms. And of course, says, do not fear them. They will not last, they're not a permanent uh, thing, but they are symbolic, just like everything here is symbolic of the fact that you are opening your eyes at last, the way the Course puts it. But what that means is that your mind is beginning to awaken mm -hmm. and you are starting to experience something other than the images that you have made. And all of the images that you are seeing are things that you have made. They are not real images. And the people that you are seeing are not real people. They are images that you have made. And at the end of uh, the text of the Course, it comes full circle. And it says that the images you make cannot prevail against what God himself would have you be. So uh, the Course is actually uh, calling on us to replace this uh, false world with the real world of what most people would call heaven which the Course describes as the awareness of perfect oneness and the knowledge that there is nothing else. And that brings up the idea that the Course is a purely non-dualistic uh, thought system because it's saying that of the two uh, seeming worlds, you know, the world of God and the world of man, that only the world of God is true. And that's uh, a pretty tall order for people to grasp. And the Course says, be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. Uh, then it is not speaking metaphorically. When it talks in that manner, it's actually meaning it literally. And that nothing in this universe of time and space is true. Uh, none of it is real. And uh, that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it and experience it. Just, but if you want to go home, and not everybody is ready to go home, but if you want to go home, then what you want to do with this universe is learn how to forgive uh, everything that you see, knowing that you are not a victim of it because you're the one who made it up and you're the one who can forgive it and be free of it. I, I think that's interesting what, what you say that uh, none of this is real. And I, I think as you continue to study the non-dualistic spiritual teachings of the ACIM, the forgiveness, <clears throat> It actually leads to what we've experienced in other students, that more peace, the more peace, because you don't take things as seriously. Um, you're not as, and again, going back to non-judgment. Um, and it's so funny because my next question was, would you be able to explain what exactly what non-dualistic spirituality is? You got, you beat sure. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, look at it this way. Uh, dualism, dualistic duo, that's two, that's two-ness. It's not oneness. Uh, it's two-ness where you have a subject and an object. You have more than one thing. That's where our consciousness arises. Now, we believe that our consciousness is very important, and uh, we're trying to raise our consciousness and all that stuff. And A Course in Miracles says, well, actually, consciousness is correctly identified as the domain of the ego. Because it involves separation. You have more than one thing which you need for separation. And the Course is saying that reality uh, has no separation. That it is perfect oneness. Uh, perfect oneness with your source, which is God and with all of creation. And that's where non-dualism comes from. It means non-tuness. Non-dual. No dual. <laughs> Only one. No dual. Only one. So when I say that the course is uh, non dualist I mean, I mean, it's saying that there is not really any separation. There is no two-ness. There is only perfect oneness in reality. Now, I'm not saying uh, that that's people's experience. I'm not here to deny people's experiences that they're real bodies, that they think have real bills to pay and all that. I, I recognize that. And I, I went through that my whole life. So I you know, certainly understand it. Uh, I'm just saying that it's a false experience. This is not true. Mm -hmm. And that reality is spirit. But when the Course uses the word spirit, it doesn't use it the way that most people do. Because most people still think of spirit as being an individual thing. You know, so my spirit is separate than your spirit because I have an individual soul. You know, well, that's not the way that the Course uh, thinks about it. It's saying that the only real spirit 
and the only reality is perfect oneness, that awareness of perfect oneness that I mentioned before, and that nothing else is true, and that it is possible for you to awaken to that. And that's real enlightenment, when you awaken to your reality of perfect oneness with your source and leave everything behind, like the dream in the night that it really is. Yeah, just to add something that the Course says very clearly in the preface, um, the very beginning, it just makes a clear distinction between, between knowledge and perception. The world of perception being the dream, anything we can perceive with the body's eyes is part of the dream. That, that's all inclusive, meaning anything that can take on a form of any kind or be separate from something else, that's all illusion. And so reality would be knowledge, which is only of God. God is perfect love. That's all that exists. So that's why the Course says God is. Mm -hmm. And then we cease to, right? We, wow. That's it, period. God is. And then we cease to speak because there's no words that are relevant to that experience. It's just an awareness of perfect oneness. That's non-dualism when you know that that's the only reality. So if, when we're sitting here doing this interview, it really looks like we're physically here, but that's part of the illusion. It really is a trick. And we're really mentally reviewing images and a world that is not only not here, but it was done and over long ago and now we're mentally reviewing images that have already happened so this yeah. is the course's version of right way of helping us to move out of the dream and awaken now from the dream is through a certain kind of forgiveness the course teaches which undoes the false self undoes this illusion through the help of what it calls the holy spirit which is which is our, our best companion, our best guide, because it represents our memory of heaven, God, our memory of truth. So the Course's tool is let's use forgiveness, true forgiveness that undoes the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which when we get there, we'll realize the dream that never really was. It, we won't even remember it because it was never there. It's really, really a fascinating. Well, yeah. I do. Uh, yeah, if I could add one thing, Carl, um, you know, uh, you've never really gone anywhere. You know, the Course describes this as a journey without distance. Uh, it says that uh, you are at home in God, dreaming of exile, but perfectly capable of awakening to reality. It says you travel but in dreams, well, safe at home. You know, so. Uh, what you're doing is you're actually watching a movie. It's like you're sitting there watching a movie and you don't go anywhere. You're still sitting there, but it looks like you're going somewhere. You go into all these exotic places and having all these serial adventures of the body, as the Course describes it, when the truth is uh, you're still at home in God and you've never left. And all that you need to do is not get back there because you've never really gone anywhere, but you do need to awaken to it. And you do that by undoing the blocks that we have put in between, which is the ego. Uh, the blocks that we have put in between ourselves and that awareness of God's presence, love's presence. And when the Course uses the word love, it's talking about God. It's not talking about uh, special human love. You know, it's talking about real love. And when it uses uh, the word knowledge, it's not talking about uh, intellectual knowledge is talking about experience of God uh, much in the same way that the Gnostics used the word gnosis, which also means knowledge, but not intellectual knowledge. It's talking about direct experience mm -hmm. of God. And that's part of the goal of the course is to lead you home where you already are, but you're not experiencing it and to actually have you experience it, to actually have that awareness of that perfect oneness. Wow. You, you know, I've been studying this stuff and living this stuff for a long time. But when I hear it explained like that, I'm still just like, wow, that is so cool. <laughs> it is. And we have a good time uh, talking to each other. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, we've been together since uh, 2007. And even uh, Cindy's whole family is into the course. Yeah. yeah. So like if we get together for like Thanksgiving dinner or something, we just talk about the course all day. Yeah, it's great. 
<laughs> and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. And it's fun to have something to talk to about, about it. But you don't have to. I, I want to uh, you know encourage people. If you're not with someone who's into the course, that doesn't mean you can't do it successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it may even speed your progress because it gives you yeah. maybe even more to forgive. <clears throat> You know, and, and so you finish with that word forgiveness. I was going to ask Cindy again, because she was talking about forgiveness. And forgiveness is one of the main teachings of uh, A Course in Miracles. In Cindy's book, The Business of Forgiveness, um, which I told you last time when, when you and I chatted, Cindy, is the best one of the best treatises on forgiveness I've ever read. And so if you could explain to people, what is the difference between the way the world practices forgiveness and what true, uh, true non-dualistic non uh, spiritual forgiveness is? Uh, before sure. you answer, just let me say two quick things. Uh, <laughs> first of all, the course is all about forgiveness. It is. And in fact, it uses the word forgiveness around 700 times. <laughs> uh, se uh, secondly, uh, the world does not practice forgiveness. <laughs> so It has having, its own brand of forgiveness, but not the kind the Course is talking about. Yeah, and, sure. and most of the world doesn't yeah. even practice that kind of forgiveness. So well, uh, on that note, please. But, we'll, we'll, let, let's dive in. Let's just dive into the, the world's traditional view of forgiveness. And, and I think a lot of people are well-intentioned with this forgiveness. They, I think they truly are. They're just not understanding um, that the difference between really letting something go and being it, returning the mind to peace, as opposed to retaining the idea in the mind that someone really did something to me and really hurt me. In other words, they have power over me to decide for me how I feel. Right? That's very, very different than the Course's view of forgiveness that says nothing happened. If we look about and we say to someone, look what you did to me. See, you hurt me, but I'm going to forgive you for that. What that does is it keeps the guilt in place in the mind and the, re the feeling of reality that that person truly was the cause of your upset. So the world's view of forgiveness, the traditional view is we were forgiving people because they really did something to us that harmed us in some way that we secretly are holding on to and still thinking that they're guilty of it, yet we're still forgiving them. That's really not fully letting it go and releasing it. So even though it's well-intentioned and it's a step in the right direction, so the course is saying, well, if we, we have to understand the whole premise of what the course is saying to understand true forgiveness. We have to understand cause and effect. We have to understand the non-dualism and the metaphysics of the course um, to understand how to apply this kind of true forgiveness. So in other words, if we are all one mind, we're not really separate. And the course is saying there's no sin. That's also made up. That's a belief. It's saying true forgiveness recognizes that what you thought another did to you hasn't really occurred because it's a projection. It's your projection. It's your dream. You're dreaming a dream. And it has not what you think they've done. And if you think that they, you know, they're the sinful ones and the guilty ones, since there's only one mind, the law of the mind says, well, then. That means if I can't let that go and I still think they're guilty and I'm, but I'm going to forgive them anyway, I'm sending a direct message to my own unconscious mind as well that says I'm guilty because there's only one. I'm, I'm guilty as well. We can't both be innocent and both be, right? We have to, we have to choose. We have to either both be guilty or both be innocent. So true forgiveness sees there is no sin. Nothing really happened. And in that view are all your sins forgiven, it says. And when it says that, it doesn't, it's not making sin real. It's saying there is no sin. Nothing really happened because the separation from God never really happened. This world is just a projection. So if we look about us and we feel somebody wronged us in some way, we're holding on to a grievance. It's really our responsibility to correct that. And that's what forgiveness is. It's a correction of the mind that replaces these attack guilty thoughts 
projecting our own unconscious guilt onto other people, making them the cause of our upset and returning that cause where it belongs to our own mind so we can change our mind about it. Come back to the mind and say, wait a minute, I'm a decision-making mind. I'm the one who gets to decide who, right? How I feel about something, how I'm interpreting something. You know, so that's what true forgiveness is. is ident it identifies the cause of your upset, which is always how you're, how you're thinking about something, how you're looking at something. It's not really that something external to you is the cause or the problem. It's our own, right? Our, our own choice that we're making to interpret what someone did or said with the ego as our teacher. That's what's upsetting us. So we identify the cause then let it go and forgive our projections, right? So that way it can be replaced by the Holy Spirit's thought system, which reminds us that we're all innocent because we are all the same in, uh, in God. And God created us all equally. And if somebody is uh, projecting, they're really calling out for love. That's another way to twist it around and work with forgiveness is seeing that all, right, violence, all attack thoughts, all, you know, violent behavior in any form it takes is really a call for help. And forgiveness helps us see it that way so that we can let it go and then reinterpret what we're seeing with the right mind instead of the wrong mind. I know it's kind of a lot of information, but I wanted to give a, round, a more well-rounded picture of the thought system. No, it was beautiful. I mean, even just sitting here listening to this, I, truly, I feel a little bit lighter. You know, I almost feel like a weight was lifted off off my shoulders just hearing that. Thank you. That was beautiful. Um, it does lift the weight. It does kind of feel like you're because it lifts the burden of placing. It's actually worse to place the cause of our upset outside of us because then we have no control. Yeah. Where's our power? It's completely gone. We've, we've let the world have the power yeah. over us. And so it's much more empowering to go, oh, my God, I get to decide how this person affects me, right? I get to, I choose my feelings and my thoughts. Nobody else can do that for me. So that's the empowering approach of A Course in Miracles. Yeah, beautiful. Um, guys, you know, even uh, with the worldwide uh, spread of fear and loathing and thoughts of separation that have occurred over the last year and a half, um, do you think the people of the world are now more than ever open to receiving the love and truth as taught by the ACIM, or do you think the world is still pretty much stuck in a dark place? Well, uh, in general, this world is screwed, glued, and tattooed. But uh, <laughs> I would say I like that, it. yeah, there are um, actually more people than ever who are on a spiritual path, who are on the process of awakening. Uh, my teachers say that there are more enlightened people today uh, than ever. The problem is you would never know that if you turn on the TV or, or follow the news, because uh, in general, our situation has become so polarized that people seem to hate each other more than ever. You can't make a mistake without being judged uh, to death by people. It's like a life sentence, you know, it, and uh, people would, they're just so desperate to project their unconscious guilt onto other people. And it doesn't matter what side of the uh, political spectrum you're on because it's the same purpose. You know, people are projecting their unconscious guilt onto the other side, regardless of which side it is. So uh, what people need to do is to stop that, you know, stop it. And the way stop that it. you do that is by choosing the right teacher instead of the wrong teacher. Uh, the wrong teacher is the ego and the ego loves that conflict, you know, and the conflict that we're seeing uh, out there on the screen is what the Course describes as an outer picture of an inward condition. And as long as you have that uh, condition of conflict uh, in the mind, the unconscious mind especially, you will have conflict out there on the screen that we are observing. But, you know, sometime in uh, the future in a galaxy far, far away, uh, there will come a time when people will have inner peace, which is one of the major goals of the course. And when people have inner peace, then outer peace would literally have to follow because it really is an outer picture of that inward condition and it cannot help but follow the inward condition. And someday there will be inner peace, which means that there will also be outer peace. But that is the only time 
that you will have peace on earth. It's when that happens. It can't happen until that happens. So there is hope for mankind, huh? Uh, yeah, not in our lifetime, but uh, there is hope uh, in the future. And by the way, you don't have to wait. You know, you don't have to wait for, uh, you know, the rest of the universe to wake up. Uh, you can do it in this lifetime, maybe one or two lifetimes at the most, if you really want it. But I think that's the key. Uh, you have to really want it badly. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't mean, practicing forgiveness doesn't mean everything is always going to go great. I mean, in your life, there might still be bumps, right? Things happen. And it doesn't mean everything physically, even with your body might be perfect. Or It's not about that. It's about the content in the mind. It's about a shift in perception from the ego's version of the story to a different story, to the Holy Spirit's version of the story, which is a completely different version of the story than we made up here about our lives. And it's, so just know that true forgiveness means that you're actually letting go of outcomes. You're not attached to the results of your forgiveness. If something's truly forgiven, yeah, you, there'd be no concern about that because that's the Holy Spirit's job is to handle the results uh, and apply it in the mind where it needs to go. Our job is just to practice it, those steps, just the steps of forgiveness, and then let go of any attachment to any results of the process and remain the best you can mm. in a positive frame of mind. The trusting, that means you're trusting in the process. And that's uh, what uh, let me say something process. really quick about that because, you know, uh, this is not a course in getting what you want. Right. Uh, that's another course. You know, that's the self-help movement. And you spend all this time getting everything you want and setting everything up. And, you know, and every, finally, you get what you want, and then you die. Uh, that's one course. The, the course that we're talking about is uh, where your main goal is to train the mind to think with the Holy Spirit instead of the ego and achieve inner peace and be guided by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the irony is that you can still have a better life with the Holy Spirit than you can possibly have on your own because the Holy Spirit can guide you through life and give you answers and point you in the right direction and actually maybe lead you to success and things. It may not fit your pictures because the Holy Spirit knows everything and you don't and you think you know what's best for you and only the Holy Spirit really knows what's best for you. And that's something the ego doesn't like also. But uh, you can have uh, both. It's, it's kind of like if you just go for this world you can have neither God or the world. But if you go for God first, you can have the world too. Mm -hmm. So the Bible was actually right when it said, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. Uh, now you're putting the horse before the cart mm -hmm. instead of the other way around. And most people are doing it the other way around and that doesn't work. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just absorbing all this in. So uh, I'm pretty good at shifting gears um, here. And, and I have a question that I, I personally really, really want to ask you. This is uh, probably a little different than anything anybody's asked you. So over the last few months, I have had the opportunity to interview here on this show and also chat in private conversations with many ascended master teachers, the Council, Vi Wamas, Yeshua, Tam, Seth, St. Germain, Sandalfon, Othella, and more. So while they universally teach love, truth, self-awakening to our, our real self and how to live a happier, healthier, and more abundant life, they all do. Plus, many of them teach uh, and talk about A Course in Miracles. I, I'm a little bit confused because uh, by some of their teaching because I don't hear any of them mention the Holy Spirit. Now, what I, uh, nor do they say the word God. Um, now, they speak, the ones that I've spoken to, um, as if Source or God is a collective of higher level non form beings, which is confusing to me. Now, you yourself, Gary, have two ascended master teachers in the form of Art and Impersa. What, what's your take on this? And, and you too, Cindy. Yeah, as I said, uh, there are symbols of the Holy Spirit, but it's really the Holy Spirit that is the teacher. But the, the Holy Spirit, in order to communicate with us, has to take on some kind of a form, which is why, of course, Miracle says about the Holy Spirit, uh, his is the voice for God and is therefore taken form. This form is not his reality. So right there, the Course says, yeah, 
you work with the Holy Spirit, but that's not his real reality. His actual reality is spirit, which is perfect oneness mm -hmm. with God. But he has to communicate with you. And he couldn't do that without taking on some kind of a form. Now, that uh, form could simply come in the form of an idea. You know, an idea has a shape to it. It has a form to it. And once in a great while, yeah, it may come in other forms like art and versa. But even they will teach that what's really important is the Holy Spirit. So even Jesus, uh, 2000 years ago, you know, people think of him as being the ultimate leader. But no, he says in A Course in Miracles that eventually I just listened to one voice. Hmm. What he meant was that he only listened to the Holy Spirit. So while people thought that he was the big leader, he was actually following the Holy Spirit. Also, yeah, I, you, you asked me to give my take on this too. I, I also think that let's remember A Course in Miracles is, is a very unique path and it uses its own terminology and ways of getting points across. But I do wanna say it doesn't have to invalidate the way other beings bring through messages. They're just maybe using different terms for something similar. But the, the reason the course just stands on its own is because it gives us a way to wake up and not only describes that the world is a dream, um, that we're awakening from, but it also talks about what reality really is, which has nothing to do with the world of form. And it gives us a way out of it, that it reminds us that this isn't the happy world, even though you can have a happy experience or a happy dream, it says, which is really a forgiving dream. Um, it, the, the goal is the attainment of true peace, which comes kind of when we're at this place where we have accepted the will of God in the sense that, look, we're, we are created in joy. We're created in peace. We're created as one, as one. And it's very unique in that, that it describes the idea of guilt in the unconscious mind being the, the one thing that is the cause of all our suffering is, is guilt that we don't know about until we learn about it. And there's this guilt, tremendous guilt in the unconscious mind over the belief that we really did separate from God, from his love, that's terrifying in the unconscious, the unconscious mind. So it had to, to make up a world in time, uh, time and space as a projection, right? To, so in a way that that's the story of the ego is it made up its own right version of the story and says that now that I'm a special individual self that has a special identity, and it's like it completely forgets about the reality of where it came, you know. And so that's the ego strategy is to keep us mindless and in a world of time and space where we feel trapped now and that there's no way out. And now this is might sound negative, but it's, the course is not a negative path. It's actually just having us look at these blocks, of, which is caused by guilt. Um, the blocks, which are our, our tack thoughts, the thoughts of guilt, um, they're all fear-based, has us really just look at them so we can work with uh, forgiveness on them and change our mind about it, uh, not to change the world, but change our mind about the world. Um, that's why the course is so unique, because it, it gives us a workbook of 365 lessons, one to practice for every day of the year, that aids us in shifting, learning to shift our perception from the wrong mind, the ego mind, to the right mind, the Holy Spirit mind. And it has its unique way of bringing through uh, the, the terminology it uses is on purpose. I know it sounds religious, but it's not a religious course. It's spiritual. Mm -hmm. And uh, because Jesus is the voice of the course and he's correcting some ideas in the traditional Christianity. He's correcting some of those ideas and saying, well, this is what I really was teaching. 2000 years ago. So that's why it has Christian terminology. It's, you know, for a Western audience um, that's so heavily steeped in these Christian ideas um, that it helps us to kind of look at things in a different way and understand our place in all of this. Um, so it's very, very unique. And, but it doesn't have to negate, you know, it's not the only path it says. So other beings may come through or be channeled through people that have very profound 
helpful things to say, uh, but they just say it in their own way. Yeah, and I, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to mention, yeah. I've never uh, seen any ascended masters actually teach A Course in Miracles. As you said, they don't mention uh, the Holy Spirit. They don't explain it. Yeah, they have their own thing, which is fine, which they're entitled to. I'm just saying uh, it's not A Course in Miracles. And uh, we, we believe in A Course in Miracles. That's what we teach. Uh, Art and Persa are the only ascended masters I've seen who actually do teach A Course in Miracles and stick to it. And the way they explain it in A Course in Miracles is that uh, the Holy Spirit will guide you to whatever is best for you. Now, the course isn't for everybody. My first book, The Disturbance of the Universe, isn't for everybody. But if you read the whole thing, and I say the whole thing because some people stop because the first half is the hardest part because it describes the ego. The second uh, half describes the solution to the problem, which is the Holy Spirit. But if you read the whole thing, then you can read A Course in Miracles and actually understand it. And uh, to my knowledge, there is no other book that's ever been written where you can read the book and then pick up A Course in Miracles and read it and actually understand it. So I think it's a, a unique contribution, not because of me, because I'm not the teacher uh, in the books, I'm the student. But uh, you know, I just have to say that I think that Arden and Purser are the only ones I've seen, you know, aside from uh, one earthly teacher named uh, Ken Lochnick, uh, they're the only ones that I've seen actually stick to the course and teach the course. And uh, what we do when we do a workshop, whether it's me alone or Cindy with me, if it's a one day workshop, uh, we will take uh, five hours of time uh, mm -hmm. to explain this. If it's a two day workshop, we'll take 10 hours of time and really explain it. And it does uh, take that kind of detail. But at the same time, uh, my attitude is if you're going to do a course in miracles, then do it. And uh, that does involve the Holy Spirit. You know, I've heard students say, oh, the Holy Spirit is passe or something like that. Uh, no, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is not passe. And you can't get home without the Holy Spirit. You can't do it on your own. If you do it on your own, you are actually reinforcing the idea of separation. But if you do it with the Holy Spirit, you are undoing the idea of separation, which is ultimately what this is all about, because the full awareness of the atonement is that the separation never occurred. It never happened. But you're not going to get to that actual experience on your own. Uh, you need the truth to lead you instead of you being the leader. Wow, this um, I'm so glad. Thank you for uh, that explanation. It, it's really reinforced a, a lot of things for me. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, who's got a joke? <laughs> I have a very short one. Okay. 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 Um, a butterfly is driving driving a car. He's driving down the road. He's in the driver's seat, driving along. And he gets stopped by a police officer. And the butterfly pulls over, he rolls down his window and the police officer asks him for his ID. He says, can I see your ID? And the butterfly says, sure. And he shows him his ID. But the police officer notices on the ID, it's an image of a caterpillar. And he looks puzzled and the butterfly sees this and he goes, oh, that, that's an old photo. <laughs> All right, put them bum. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Okay, I got one too. I got another short one too. Okay. Okay. okay so uh, Tarzan is uh, trying to get home. You know, so he's swinging through the trees and he's grabbing the vines and he's trying to get back to the treehouse. You know where Jane is because he loves Jane. So he's trying to get home to Jane and he's swinging through the trees and finally he lands on the treehouse and his you know face has all these scratches on it and he looks all disheveled and. He, Looks like he's uh, had a hard time. And, and Jane goes running up to him and says, uh, Tarzan, Tarzan, what's the matter? What's the matter? And he says, boy, I'll tell you, baby, it's a jungle out there. Oh, my God. We're going to see you on the Jimmy Kimmel show or something like that. <laughs> oh, God. 
like I said, I like to laugh. So thank you guys. That was, that was a blast. So, um, and you know, so we'll wind up here. We've been talking to, uh, uh, two of the finest teachers of A Course in Miracles in the world, uh, Gary Renard and Cindy Laura Renard. Uh, they're tag teaming us today. Uh, Gary, I would be remiss if I did not ask if we can look forward soon to the release of your fifth book. Uh, is that in the works? I know you two have been working on things together, but what about that fifth book? Well, if I were you, I wouldn't look forward to it soon. Uh, but uh, I think... <laughs> you know, it won't be that long either, because I think that uh, the way I see it, Cindy and I's book, we, we're writing a book together about relationships. I can see that coming out fairly soon. Uh, I think it'll be more like at least a year and a half before mm -hmm. the book with Arden in person will come out. But I think that people will be looking forward to it because it's about uh, finishing the job. It's about going all the way home to God. It's about achieving enlightenment and waking up. And I, I think that that's something that uh, people are going to be looking forward to. And I, I do want to say uh, about the disappearance of the universe to anybody who is thinking about star just started studying A Course in Miracles and actually Cindy's book too, uh, The Business of Forgiveness. If you read those two books, it is a beautiful primer to jump into A Course in Miracles and, and actually start to grasp the concept. I think Gary, you, you and I have said to each other in the past when we first started reading it, it was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, it's so oh, I, uh, Carl, I would not uh, have understood A Course in Miracles without the material in this book that was given to me by Arden and Cursa. And people who do the course on their own uh, invariably are experiences that they don't understand. Yeah. yeah. So really, folks, grab those books, The Disappearance of the, of the Universe by Gary Renard, Business of Forgiveness by Cindy Laura Renard. And uh, guys, uh, I know your schedule's back. Is there any upcoming online or live uh, things, uh, appearances uh, or teachings that you'd like to mention quickly? Uh, we would love to remind people who may not know, we do online classes on the course. Um, we do two two-hour classes for a total of four hours every month um, on a different theme in the course because it's a very thick book. <laughs> it's lots of material to draw upon. We've been doing them for three years. They're going great. We, it's a great community of people from around the world. You can join in from anywhere around the world. And you can find the information on my website, cindylaura.com. I have very detailed information about the classes on my appearances page. Um, you can subscribe to the classes or you can pay as you go if you don't want to be a monthly subscriber. There's, so there's a couple different options there. Um, but they're very, very affordable. We've kept it that way on purpose. We, so they're very affordable. Um, but if you're interested in that, that's, that's mm -hmm. ongoing. Uh, and you can check our appearances pages at our websites for more events. Mm, that's well. right. Uh, I can right. just mention that I'm doing a workshop in uh, Melbourne, or, uh, <clears throat> not Australia, Florida, uh, <laughs> on November the yeah. 6th. And uh, that's a Saturday. And that's uh, just south of Orlando. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, a week later, 13th and 14th of November, I'll be doing a two-day workshop with three other people near Mexico City. Oh, wow. And uh, that'll be great. Then on Tuesday, the 16th, uh, I'll be doing a thing in uh, San Miguel Allende. Uh, and then after that, we are going to take some uh, time off to really concentrate on writing. And uh, I'm looking forward to that because uh, we have done so many things online this year. It's been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And also a few live things. And I'm actually uh, looking forward to focusing more on writing. Yeah, great. And and Luna, your cat, will be happy to have you home. Uh, She's gotten used yeah. to guys being around more. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We love, yeah. yeah. It's nice that we can be home with her you know, a little more often right now. You know, uh, Eckhart totally said that uh, he has lived with uh, several Zen masters, all of whom were cats. So... Uh, <laughs> And I think uh, Luna definitely fits that description. She does. I'm beginning to think my cat Maya is too. She watches over me very closely. And Aww. even the tiniest little blip in my energy and my, my attitude, she's going, ram, ram. Yep. They're very wise, very in touch, in tune, for sure. 
Yeah. And gentlemen, we have been blessed. I mean, really blessed to have Gary Renard and Cindy Laura Renard, my beautiful friends and teachers of A Course in Miracles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for being you. on again. Uh, World thank Awakenings is, is so grateful to have you here. Thanks for having us again and together. This is nice to do this yeah, together. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been another episode of World Awakenings. The Fast Track to Enlightenment with your host, Carl Gruber, a certified Law of Attraction Life Coach. We welcome you to tune in each and every episode of this podcast, World Awakenings, as we open your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that all the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to the truth of all things metaphysical and spiritual, and just how they play an all-important role in our moment-to-moment everyday life. Much love and light to you, my friend. Thank you for tuning in.